It's Toma time! Sugar Sean O'Malley. It is time to say hello to Cody Garbrandt. Not because that's the next matchup to make, but I'll let you guys know very shortly exactly why. Sean O'Malley has had an insane fast track to a UFC championship. Before Sean was even in the UFC, he had Snoop Dogg commentating on his Dana White's Contender Series fight. The hype this man had and the push he got from the UFC all the way until he won the title was massive. If I'm being honest with myself, I never ever thought he would become a UFC champion. When he lost to Cheeto Vera that first fight, I was like, this guy does not have what it takes. He had a foot injury and immediately got smashed on the ground. A real UFC fighter, a champion potential fighter would have taken that injury and continued to fight, not let himself get smashed within 30 seconds on the ground. With that being said, he proved me wrong. He won a UFC championship against Aljamain Sterling. Not in my wildest dreams did I expect Sean to stuff all of Aljamain Sterling's takedowns, let alone knock him out in the UFC cage. Now even with Sean O'Malley beating Aljamain Sterling and becoming the UFC champion, let's just take a look at how he got to the championship to predict the future of his career. Sugar Sean, to get a title shot opportunity, had to fight Eddie Wineland, Marlon Chido Vera, which he lost to, Thomas Almeida, Chris Moutinho, someone who's not even in the UFC anymore, Raulian Paiva, Pedro Munoz, no contest, and Peter No Mercy Jan, who got absolutely robbed by the judges. Now personally, I am not upset for how Sugar Sean got this title shot and how he took advantage of his whole UFC career. He rode the wave of the UFC trying to make a superstar out of him. But the reality is, that's just not what he is and it's not what he will ever become and I think the UFC is starting to catch on to it. Yes, he is a very good fighter, and I think he exceeded almost all of our expectations in beating Aljo and becoming the champion. But what he messed up on is comparing himself to Conor McGregor. Sean O'Malley has had zero memorable Mike moments. I watch a lot of UFC. I watch all of the press conferences and all of the post-fight press conferences. There's nothing that sticks out in my mind that I can remember him saying that made me think this guy is marketable. I think a lot of UFC fans would have come to support Sugar Sean O'Malley a lot more if he didn't start sipping on his own hype. Didn't start saying crazy things like he is going to be a draw like Conor McGregor and he is the future of the UFC and he's one of the most marketable pay-per-view fighters on the roster. In simple terms, as soon as he did all this Conor comparison, he went from a hyped up fighter who had a lot of talent to a straight up clown. It just didn't make any sense and it did not relate to UFC fans whatsoever. Now while I studied Sean O'Malley's career, looked at his fighting style, the fights he had, how he got to the title shot, and what happened once he did get the title, it gave me a perfect comparison. Insert Cody No Love Garbrandt. Do you guys remember the immense hype that Cody Garbrandt had in the mid 2010s on his title shot run. I remember working at a grocery store and I looked to the side and it's Cody Garbrandt on a body armor bottle. This man had a partnership with body armor, stood next to Kobe Bryant at a marketing event. I mean, this guy was promoted like the future of the UFC, just like Sean O'Malley. And now you look at their fighting styles. They're both very great crisp strikers with good foot movement. Look what Cody Garbrandt did against Dominic Cruz in his first title fight. It was immense. Now, when looking at the career of Cody Garbrandt when he was being pushed so heavily by the UFC because they truly thought they had another superstar, you will notice a very similar path to Sean O'Malley. Just to set a picture, an example, I read to you Sean O'Malley's build up fights to becoming a champion. Let me show you the fights that Cody Garbrandt had to fight in order to get a championship opportunity. We have Henry Briones, Augusto Mendes, Thomas Almeida, Takeya Mizugaki, and then Dominic Cruz for the belt. He fought Takeya Mizugaki for a title shot opportunity. Who are these fighters they had to fight to get this opportunity? I am strictly making this comparison based on their fight style, who they had to fight to get to the championship, and the belief that Sean O'Malley will never ever touch a UFC belt again, just like Cody Garbrandt after losing to TJ Dillashaw. We all know how Cody Garbrandt's career turned out post UFC championship. 
It was an insane fall from glory. I mean, this guy was the greatest UFC fighter for 15 minutes in that cage against Dominic Cruz. And to look at his career now, you wonder what happened because it can't just be a physical thing. Now, with that being said, I am not implying that Sean O'Malley is going to go on this massive losing streak like Cody Garbrandt. I am saying, however, that Sean O'Malley is just a slightly better version of Cody Garbrandt. But in the end, he will also never become champion again. I truly believe that him beating Aljo was one of the biggest flukes in title fight history. Not the punch landing, not the result of it all, but just that he beat such a dominant wrestler in Aljo. But let me tell you exactly why he was able to beat Aljamain Sterling. Reason number one, he is an American wrestler. What I said in my last video stands true, that American wrestlers don't have the overall MMA IQ to put the wrestling together with the striking, the foot movement, and the overall just awareness in the octagon. The only reason Sean O'Malley was able to catch Aljamain Sterling is because he doesn't have smooth takedown entries and just sometimes forgets he's a wrestler who has no striking capabilities. The reason fighters such as Islam, Bilal, and Marab are so dominant is because they can put it all together. They have a complete MMA game. Their striking fits perfectly into their wrestling. They have smooth transitions and they have a perfect understanding of what they need to do within the octagon. Let's be real. Aljo was never that fighter. He was never a complete fighter. He got absolutely dominated by Jan in his first title shot opportunity and got bailed out by a knee. He would have never became champion. And so for Sean O'Malley to have gotten a title shot off of a clear loss to Peter Jan and then having to fight Aljo who should have never became a champion, it starts to paint a clear picture that Sean is not the fighter that the UFC made him out to be and that he himself has overvalued himself as well, comparing himself to Conor and saying that he wants to box and take on Ilya Teporia. It just, none of it started to make sense. With the UFC realizing he doesn't have the star power that they expected, and with Sean no longer having the belt, where does he go now in his career? He will become a contender eliminator. Someone who is good enough to beat all of the contenders, but not good enough to become the champion. Insert Max Holloway. If you do not have an all-around MMA game in today's fighting styles, you will not survive. The reason Sean will never become a champion again is because there are people like Marab Davalishvili and Umar Nurmagomedov in the same division. These are killers who if you fight them, you will get treated like a fragile toy. They do not mess around, they do not play, they will pressure you, put you against the cage, take you down, and smash you. You already saw what Marab did to Sean. He made it look easy. I believe that the hype of Sean O'Malley has come to an end. As long as Umar and Marab are anywhere near the same division as him, he just doesn't have enough to become a champion. Like I said in my last video, dark times are coming for the UFC. It is the age of wrestling fucks taking over and leaving no mercy while also having no mic skills and no personality. All I've said in this video guys, no harm, no foul, just an unfortunate discovery I have made.